Greetings. We present to you the SMK, the Sentinel's Marvelous Kaleidoscope. At CFRU 93.3 FM in Guelph, Ontario, through the web on CFRU.ca, and live streaming on CFRU's YouTube channel. We are your master overseers, Drew J.C. and Nicholas Cooper. We will be looking inward and beyond at progressive rock, the branches of progressive fusion and alternative genres, a reminiscent anomaly, and other unique discoveries near and far. Join us as we gaze into the audible lens out at the diverse musical landscape on the ever-changing horizon.
Welcome, my good sentries. Uh, hmm? wrong, Sir? Wrong mic there. Oh, hmm? hello. No, we're all good. Oh, yep. okay. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. Little technical difficulties there. <laughs> Welcome, good sentries, to an audience in the Observational Tower, the music interview series we have through the Sentinel's Marvelous Kaleidoscope here at CFRU 93.3 FM and on CFRU.ca. In our last audience, uh, we had the Brampton, Kitchener, Waterloo, Prague, Punk Trio, Ned Flanders, ripping it up in here in the CFRE studios. Today, we've been skewed to um, have this wonderful man, an eclectic electroacoustic solo guitarist from Whitby, Ontario, sonically painting surreal symphonic ambient scenes with his immaculate warm finger style acoustic guitar backed by self constructed electronic and digital orchestral techniques he's just released uh, his stellar sophomore album M moments and he's here for uh, us at cfru to presenting his perfect glow of pragmatic soundscapes that stretch time and space across his collection of vivid constellatory pieces Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to the SMK, Mark. Yeah. It's a pleasure, yeah. pleasure to be here. Yeah, yeah, Mark, Mark Wiley. Yes, how are, have you been doing, Mark? I've been doing great. It's been a lovely experience here in Guelph. I'm Def glad you like it. Yeah, I definitely fall in love with your lovely city here. It's great. It's not too shabby, eh? Yeah, so I like it. <laughs> um, so what have you been up to recently? Uh, recently, you know, writing, working on a uh my band matria metal project we're working on our second album so oh nice right. we've been recording that so the first single is probably coming out soon maybe mid-april best case scenario cool it's Very been cool yeah it's just sent off to mixing so yeah i've nice. heard i've heard some of your uh your heavy stuff earlier today you're showing me little clips and yes i i like to dabble in the metal metal realm mm -hmm. so this is kind of like i don't know if it's a side, a side project but it's just a project on the lighter spectrum of the musical scale yeah, yeah it's yeah. always nice to get both into the hard uh hard um textures as well as the soft ones like a, a good balance mm -hmm. between both two like b belt it out and also just meditate and stuff yeah i, I like to think if you listen closely you'll still kind of hear those metal metal roots or those the heavy music the powerful kind of energetic uh resonance still in the more ambient sphere of things so i can feel it in the backing tracks definitely in in your uh picking styles and sort of your like more of your like more solo istic segments are really what i think gets that metal um stylings i think that comes out in your music yeah i mean i guess you can't take it out of there but it's just a different uh different approach different medium to um i guess get across um a message yeah so why don't we start by how you came to be a guitarist a guitarist well uh it's kind of a funny story kind of happened by accident um it all kind of happened when my brother he was i guess he asked to get a drum set he was a lot cooler than i was so he was in, into all those cool like uh 90s bands like you know your green day and your nirvana oh, okay. so he got into drumming so i was with him when um my parents took us to, you know, we went to Law McQuaid and they were kind of checking out the drum rooms they got there and I was kind of just wandering around Law McQuaid and there was just like these, you know, the epic wall of, of uh, guitars they got there. So I remember being kind of mystified by the whole thing, like what is this instrument? I'd taken piano lessons, but that didn't really stick because, you know, piano lessons when you're a kid are brutal. But uh, uh, yeah, so we got a rental guitar. I sucked. I remember the... the <laughs> really? Oh, I can't believe that. <laughs> uh, There's also a funny story. I uh, They 
gave the, the guitar to me like here like try it out and i like put it on my lap like really awkwardly like i thought this is how you hold it <laughs> something like that and i was like trying to play it and my brother was like no like you idiot like get up hold, hold it right so i think that was all very uh humbling experience just being um in a spot you know just knowing so little about this mysterious instrument and this whole magical world that music kind of unfolded as i began to study the guitar and then really the guitar became a vessel to study music which is really i guess the the end game i think what you're doing with any instrumental stuff it's not just about noodling on the guitar it's about deeping diving deep within the musical world and unlocking certain harmonic rhythmic melodic like an artistic statement uh, yeah uh, like totally. expressing yourself mm -hmm. is that what you do with your any music that you play yeah good segue uh, <laughs> uh definitely the the last time i put out which i guess you introduced moments i um took it more on the approach of introducing how can i incorporate emotional aspects to the music so really digging into um using music as a vehicle for catharsis so most of the songs on the album that you know during the time i wrote them maybe emotionally it wasn't really in a stable place so music was a good vessel to kind of keep me balanced keep me in check with some of the you know just like even some of the little things i was going through music was always kind of just like that crux to keep me centered or balanced so i think in the songs there is that resonance of um you know where i was in my life in that place and time fair enough true yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um, I guess going back more into training, that's actually a little journey of your own because you've actually been to a, one of the prestigious colleges. Why don't we delve into that? Go down that route? <laughs> yeah, so um, coming out of high school, I guess I can start around that time of, time of the story. Right around then, you're kind of thinking like, okay, what am I going to do? after I graduated high school and I think I was pretty serious about I wanted to study music so um, I started I kind of realized pretty quick that I wasn't going to do classical because I couldn't do grade one to grade eight in under oh. a year so I think even like maybe I even looked here in Guelph and it was like you need like level eight classical guitar and it's like not gonna, not gonna happen so yeah i was like, okay jazz i gotta learn jazz so i remember like basically trying to learn jazz in two years to get into school and in hindsight that was not a good idea just it's trying learn, to cram everything together yeah learning jazz is a lifelong endeavor and me thinking i was a big rocker and you know i appreciate jazz for what it is but as far as like a um a personal expression I didn't have that um, wasn't my voice so mm -hmm. it was a bit of a struggle to be like I have to learn this style of music as a means f for like my future career so um, so that led me on the journey of studying jazz so I began looking at schools and so before I did the whole Berkeley Boston trip mm -hmm. I actually had during my audition phases I got a scholarship to Carleton so when I, I spent oh, okay. a year in Ottawa and that was great I loved it there and I think maybe it was the summer before I I kind of knew I was going to go to Carleton because I mean scholarship I think oh another good story is a friend of mine who I was kind of in a band with also got in there so I was like hey we could like keep this project going in, in Ottawa didn't pan out but um, it's interesting how the past keep moving on. Um, so I think before I moved to Ottawa, there was a summer camp at Berkeley. It's like five weeks. You get like, it's pretty much like a, a pre semester at Berkeley. And that was kind of just like a dip my toes in. Maybe, maybe I went because I got, I auditioned there and I got in. So that's how it works. So I was like, do I really want to like, I'm like 18, right? Do I want to? move <laughs> to, a, to a foreign country and go to one of the most prestigious m schools of music and you know I just didn't feel like I was ready because like like I said like 
I knew it was like a jazz school and I knew I was a terrible jazz player. So I was like, I need like another year just kind of like, like get more confident. I yeah, guess. totally. So, uh, I think, I think that year I did a lot of growing cause you know, first time living on my own being in Ottawa, it was definitely a good stepping stone to getting into, uh, you know, the bigger pond of Boston. So Boston was like a magical place. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Berkeley is like a, they call it the, I mean, it's probably like a connotation down there, but I think it's pretty awesome. The Berkeley bubble, you're in this like part of the city and it's, I guess it's similar to like here in Guelph, the campus, you just kind of have a community and the difference being here in Guelph, you have like your, you know, your engineers and your business and your architects, but at Berkeley, it's all music. So all the different kinds of walks of life of musical uh, artists from all around the world so the the cultural like just like my social group was like I had a buddy from California buddy from Guatemala you know so just like just being in that community of people all really being serious about their craft was just like a tremendous um, environment just to be able to grow and and also like support each other yeah and I I learned a lot like the way they one the way they teach music is pretty incredible um their range of things that you can study was just like amazing um yeah it's like some of the best times of my life for sure it's amazing there so when was that that was a, just a few years ago then yeah i think i'm two or three it's maybe my third year post graduation so then after you or what did you graduate with after? Uh, bachelor of Music. And um, I guess the degree is called Professional Music. So the cool thing, again, with Berkeley is like you can kind of like handpick your... Um, all the courses you can All take? the courses. And they have like 12 majors worth of music from like production and, you know, performance, business, entrepreneurship, all these, you know, com compositions. So I kind of just like, well what do I want to do with my music? And I was able to kind of like craft the things that I thought I needed to, you know, be a good yeah. musician. <laughs> yeah. Yes, of course. Um, do you want to get into another song or two? Maybe it's about four twenty ish. What do you think, Nick? Um, sure. If you're up for it, Mark. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, so actually, we uh, Mark began this uh, live stream on the YouTube channel here at CFRU 93.3 FM with uh, Walking in the Rain, which is off Mark's newest album, Moments. Uh, what song are we going to, or what piece are we going to listen to next, Mark? Uh, next, we're going to listen to Clairvoyance. Oh, it's nice. It's the hint. So, yeah, here's Mark here on CFRU 93.3 FM in Guelph, Ontario.
You're listening to CFRU 93.3 FM in Guelph, Ontario, through the web at CFRU.ca and live streaming on CFRU's YouTube channel. That was Clairvoyance by performed by Mark Wiley um, off the new album Moments. That was incredible, Mark. Thanks. <laughs> Actually, that's uh, there was a lot of finger picking, so why don't we explore that avenue like because uh for me i've played uh your band uh matria on the radio before and certainly there is a huge difference (laughs) in um in style or more i guess more loudness i guess or um what would you say is like the the main uh, difference between what you play in your in Matria and then your solo stuff. The main difference, um, one, I guess the main one is that the songs I typically write for Matria are meant for a band and a metal band. So the approach, the process, the textures, the timbres. Um, all of those things, like the influence, is all very different. So f- for Matria, you know, we're going for that kind of hard rock, metalcore, gent, progressive metal kind of thing. So obviously with any style, um, you need to kind of cater to certain um, principles, concepts. So... There's also a certain sound, I think, me and the other guitarist in Matria, uh, Matt. I think there's a kind of a sound that we're honing in on that I think, you know, ultimately the goal is like when you hear that sound, it's like, oh, that's that band. And then for this project, again, different approach. It was kind of um, a vessel for all of this classical and jazz training I had under my belt that again just you can't exactly utilize that within the confines of a metal genre maybe in the uh, progressive metal realm you can kind of dabble there a bit but you don't really go head first so it all kind of started this project kind of started also by like an accident Um, and, and an aunt of mine was kind of always like hey you should like record me some she like loves like <laughs> flamenco music like you should you know play me that flamenco guitar and, and I was like okay like sure so <laughs> so one Christmas it gets kind of a little tradition I do now where I I make a an album for my family that's like just like a collection of songs so the first album yeah. I should put out I don't know if I really ever meant to be an album it's just kind of like beginning in like November of that year I was like I'm going to write that flamenco album which turned into being like an acoustic um, record that I just really began to experiment with how can I use the acoustic guitar and all these world influences that maybe have from like Celtic to like um, Hindustani to just like maritime kind of folky vibes all those kind of influences that weren't being utilized in the metal realm into, you know, this music. So it's nice to have this outlet of all that stuff, all the music I love that um, wouldn't necessarily work under the umbrella of metal. I can now kind of funnel into this. Yeah. So I guess that's the main difference. You're like, all the music is you play on the acoustic guitar or actually a, a selection of them. Yes. So, yeah, I, I write the songs f- for solo fingerstyle kind of guitar. And then for the writing process of this album, it kind of dawned on me that in comparison to the first album, I tried to stretch out on the sonic capabilities of the guitar with, you know, various pedals, electronic effects, and things like that. So everything was all synthesized from the guitar. And then maybe when I was sketching out the first song for this album, uh, which was Walking in the Rain, the first song I played, I kind of had that first riff, and then I began to think, like, oh, like instead of like layering that with a crazy reverb tail pad kind of sound, let's just put 
put on some synthesizer that's a pad and then oh like maybe this part could strings and then without oh, percussion and then just like that became I kept adding all these different textures to, essentially to replace parts that I would probably write on guitar so instead of there being 12 layers of guitar it's just you know 12 layers but it's more that's how the or I guess the orchestra became to be and I began to create that um the atmosphere that really became moments yeah that was a that's actually something uh very striking for um the music you play because you have that the backing track of all this um like you have also have like nature sounds and like the strings and stuff um which is quite beautiful by the way um um Maybe um, why don't we go into more of the album of moments and uh, you um, yeah I can play another tune. Um, oh sure, that would be. Uh, I'm just tuning up for uh, uh, my song Glimmer. Okay, that that sounds a good a good plan. Yes, uh, yeah. So here's Glimmer by Mark Wiley here at CFRU ninety three point three FM and CFRU dot CA and live streaming on YouTube.
That was Glimmer by Mark Wiley. That was awesome, dude. Thanks, buddy. I really like that uh, that diddly rundown you do. You know the one. Diddly, 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 diddly. Diddly. Exactly. Yeah. We know what we're talking about. Yeah, that's one of my favorite pieces, actually. Like, uh, yeah. Yeah, I think that one, you can kind of detect the metal a bit more. You know, you're kind of drop D kind of thing going on. Mm-hmm. Awesome. I wanted to ask you a question uh, about the album art. Sure. Um, so, yeah, the cover for uh, your album Moments is pretty cool. Um, I just wanted to ask, like, who made it and sort of what's the meaning of the, I guess it's a blue, a blue jay. Mm-hmm and uh the rest of it yeah so i worked with this uh illustrator whose name is veronica park Mm -hmm. um i had commissioned her for some pieces for matria so i got a kind of a handle on her work process which is really amazing because i for like for example for the first commission i think i did it was just kind of like here's the idea and then she came back with like three drafts that were all like amazing and then you're like oh like which one do I pick yeah so when I thought like oh maybe I need to get out my work done because I wasn't sure I was going to do like some sort of photography thing or like a digital kind of but I thought I think I wanted to get something um hand drawn for the the aesthetic so I hit her up and I didn't want to like I, th- I, I wanted to play to her strengths I just because like the way I equate it is like if someone came to me to commission a song and they're like, needs to be an E minor, needs to be three four, and it needs to be three minutes long. It probably wouldn't be my best song. So mm-hmm. when I when I hit her up, I was just like, hey, I, I want you to draw something that's like you want to draw that works within the um, you know, also like the motifs or like the emotional blueprint. Or so I kind of we kind of went back and forth and created a dialogue of I think some motifs or concepts could be, and she came back with like you know, eight concepts, and then we kind of went, we still kind of came, we kind of funnel it down to um, the idea. It was either between, came down to two, and they both involved the Blue Jay. One was with like an hourglass to kind of more obviously portray the idea of time, which is a big, I guess the overarching concept in moments, being that all the songs were kind of written at a key moment. Um, so the Blue Jay, for me, um, you know that whole like 11, 11, 12, 34 kind of synchronicity you get when you look at the clock and it's like 11, 11, mm-hmm. you, know, uh, like, you know what I'm talking about? 2.22 and all that. Yeah, okay, so it's basically kind of along those lines of um, whenever I go out for a walk where I'm in nature, uh, I had a couple of those experiences where um, just like a, I swear like a blue jay would just appear kind of thing. So it kind of... A, since some of those experiences, I kind of just associated with like a blue jay being like a spirit animal for me. Mm-hmm. I mean, oh, it, nice. it sounds silly, but like I just, it's just like one of those funny beliefs I just kind of, I take lightly. And That's symbolic it's, for you. Yeah, it's just I like being right. silly with those kind of things, right? So mm. um, I thought in the spirit of that, like when those blue jays would appear, it's in a certain moment. So I thought that would be like a suitable um, motif. Plus, Veronica is amazing at drawing birds, so it was like that was like well, working with all the strength. Got the yeah, orbits down. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's awesome. And oh, I guess more so about the songs on on moments. Like, what's what's your favorite? Like, what are you most proud of? Sort of thing. Um, I think actually I'll place one the song next if we have time. Um, I think the song "Lost and Found" was. Um probably the uh most painful of <laughs> oh. of the songs but i think that was the song i realized like oh this is how you channel emotions in a a way to turn a negative situation into something that can be positive so so you mean emotionally painful e- yeah not necessarily for me but there is a secondary meaning which it is i don't know if i'll be sharing that one mm-hmm. but um okay. but yeah um i think with that song i kind of realized the power of maybe writing to your emotions versus maybe say for like if i write for metal i'm maybe writing for an aesthetic like a um maybe you write for like the crowd engagement of a mosh pit you don't really write from the experience that triggered 
the things you're feeling that you need to express to write and then you take that experience and you write it into a song mm-hmm. you know what I'm trying to get at right it's not like the the build up breakdown you know outro whatever formula kind of thing right yeah mm-hmm. or is the um, the album it's actually I think some of the green screen we have going on is uh, some of your videos that you've made up so is the um like you've said, it's part of a journey. So is that what you kind of imagine the audience interacting? Like, is that supposed to be like a, a visual thing for them? Yeah, it's something I've been meaning to do. And I guess I even overheard you guys in the last hour talking with um, David and... Uh, David Stein and Alex Ricci. Alex, yeah. Um, they were saying how they were incorporating kind of the audio, audio visual. And over the course of the past like month or so of... Um, doing these shows I've realized as an instrumental artist having that visual aspect can be really huge for the audience who um, maybe they're not familiar with instrumental music maybe they're not a musician so it's hard for them to kind of uh, latch on to things that are going on so it gives them something to interact with in an, in, in an accessible fashion right so I had been meaning to put together some visuals and this was I guess my attempt and I guess um some of the concepts that I want to portray is just almost, um, I guess, like surrealism is a big one. Um, kind of creating like a fantasy kind of world. So, like fantasy with a bit of like, well, nature as well. Yeah. So, I'm also. Yeah, you told us about like earlier on that you actually have been actually I've been dabbling in photo- photography and so have you actually <laughs> yeah by uh taking my girlfriend's camera and <laughs> going on little excursions hence the visuals we uh we got today yeah I think I definitely caught the photography bug it's an interesting way to bring yourself to the present moment yeah um maybe um Oh yes, actually, the one of them, I well, totally forgot about it. Uh, well, the, the main reason you are in Guelph is because you just performed la- in Guelph last night at uh, Silence. Um, you were the main, I guess, the main headliner with uh, Guelph's own Hymns Fifty Seven and Drew J C here. Um, what was that experience like to perform? Oh, at Silence, it was wonderful. It was the. Uh the first show I feel like it's actually like meant for my kind of music the uh, past couple of shows I've been doing are your um, either like a bar a, you know maybe like a venue with you know mostly like a bar audience right so I've kind of realized I have to kind of tailor some of my songs to play the room because I can't go full meditation mode everyone's going to be like talking or bored right so you kind of have to in- create that engagement with the crowd but i guess you have to ante up your in- um intensity yeah and the beauty about silence was it was like a listening room dedicated to this kind of um experimental or progressive art form and i feel like everyone who was there like knew what they were kind of there to see and mm-hmm. i think playing to an audience who knows maybe who was like ready to appreciate that kind of thing was really special so or really love that space so it's great you, you even burned a stick of incense for your set oh yeah go, was, to that, go full you gotta further create the ambiance yeah, yeah yeah that was a good addition and a good thing that you did say before you you actually played the whole your whole album moments for your set that you said you told the audience to like to either like close your eyes or like just to be enveloped with the sound is that is that pretty much what you want your audience to do um i think maybe for for that show i want to do something special because in the in the past i had kind of experimented with telling people the stories of each song as i was about to play it but i think part of the beauty in instrumental music is that people are free to interpret the sounds they hear in as free a way as they can you know there's no lyrics guiding them painting the picture it's just their own mind creating the space that 
they imagine. So I thought for this show, I really wanted to just say, you know, this is my album. You know, imagine, bring yourself to an inner place where you can kind of resonate with your own emotional thing you have going on maybe in that, you know, time. So maybe for someone one of those songs had a particular resonance based on a similar emotion we were feeling. Mm-hmm. That was kind of maybe the thing I was trying to open myself up to was allowing the audience to um, have a inner experience versus I feel like most of the shows did there for that kind of external stimulus. So it's kind of a nice chance to flip it on them and be like, psych, you came out to be entertained yeah. and yet you're going on a little inner meditation voyage. That's definitely one of my favorite things like you know uh feedback wise whether it's me playing for someone or whether i show someone a a song by whoever else and they're like oh you know i could you know what i saw while i was listening to that or like it made me think of this like not necessarily compared to another band sound or another artist sound it's like oh you know i saw like you know the tundra or like i felt like i was you know whatever on mars or whatever yeah. it might be like, and some of that feedback I've got from people after the shows kind of help fortify or really solidify the fact of the visuals I was creating was people were like I feel like I went to another dimension and was hanging yeah. with like fairies and stuff <laughs> it's like you were surprised <laughs> yeah. so I, I wanted to try and create that you know very surreal um, feel in the uh, vis- was, visuals and like tranquil and calm environment mm-hmm it did the trick for me. I don't know. I don't know about you, Nick. <laughs> no, she certainly did that for me. <laughs> what did you think of Hymns 57 and our uh, man Drew here? Hymns was amazing. Uh, I talked to him a little bit after the show, mm-hmm. and I realized the whole thing was improvised, and I have <laughs> so much respect for that because like, that's something I want to do at some point is just Im- further embrace the idea of being in the moment and being able to create the atmosphere he was able to do just by being fully present in the moment with and so so, that, so calm too yeah because <laughs> there's you know there's a, definitely a certain fear you have to be like I right, it's bold to be like i'm gonna go show up at a venue with my toys and not have anything no idea what's gonna happen so yeah props to steven yeah i was really happy to have him on the bill i was like oh this is gonna be great you know mm-hmm. that maybe. was my first time seeing him and like it was glorious yeah that oh, was your first time eh? yeah oh cool yeah um actually he's even got a show for anyone who doesn't know he's got a show on cfru called aural tethers uh, fridays from 10 p.m to 1 a.m lots of droney ambient experimental goodness and you know yeah and what did you think of drew's set drew Mark, <laughs> <laughs> not, can I be perfectly honest, or should I water it down? Rip me apart. <laughs> I I think you're on the right path. I I, I do want to like talk afterwards on. Obviously, like, I don't want to like um, be too critical, but I I do. I think you're on the right track. I think you just got to refine mm-hmm. you, the uh, the vision. Um, I would love to work with you as far as like a production standpoint on some of your stuff because I think the bass the the parts you've got composed are there I just think the presentation and I'm thinking of someone who's you know been there and failed and mm-hmm. kind of didn't succeed so just keep doing what you're doing and take those failures as like a good way to just take leaps you know keep taking leaps yeah i've been i've been telling everyone and i even used the, these words verbatim last night while you were setting up i'm like yeah i'm, I'm kind of garagey you know i'm still kind of finding my my sound and not having been like formally trained or you know i'm not a gearhead i've got some pedals and stuff but i it's really all just like trial and error and i've got these sounds that kind of come to me and i get these ideas i'm like oh that sounds like it works and and I think that passion comes through in your music, like your dedication. Mm-hmm. And that is like one of the main, like strong points mm-hmm. to your music. Yeah. Uh, yeah I, I appreciate that. Thanks for not just like, you know. <laughs> hey man, great set. Great set. <laughs> good yeah. game. Good game. Good yeah. game. Good game. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, I yeah. wasn't, I wasn't fully satisfied. I told you this morning, I was like, yeah, last night. Mm. Not only did I, n- I wasn't able to play 
everything I wanted to. I was just, you know, especially after like playing, playing after your set where it's all clean and polished and, you know, composed. I'm just like, I probably should have went after Steven or even before Steven. Yeah, you know, well, like, thanks for taking one for the team there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, looks like we're getting to, to, to the top of the hour um, uh, of this uh, edition of the audience in the observational tower. Is there anything we might have missed that you want to um, say uh, maybe about your music and words of wisdom? Um, one thing I'd like to uh, plug is uh, the Spotify route. I feel like the industry is going towards the streaming platform, so... If you'd like any of the music you hear, please check me out on Spotify at Mark Wiley and hit that follow button so that moving forward, I can kind of hijack some of those Spotify algorithms and Mm. really kind of get launched into the whole audience base that the platform has to offer. Mark needs to eat too, people. (laughs) Um, Yeah. So where can, like other than Spotify, you have some of your other social medias as well? Yeah. Most of the handles are at... Um, Mark Wiley Music, and that's W Y L I E. As I found out, people don't necessarily know how that <laughs> last uh, name is spelled. <laughs> yeah. Was, well, thank you, Mark, for coming on to yeah, the SMK. Thank, and thank you, Nick, and thank you, Drew. Of course. Yeah. Thanks, man. Uh, what piece are we going to end off with? Uh, we are going to end off with Lost and Found. Yes. Nice. This has been the SMK, the Sentinel's Marvelous Kaleidoscope at CFRU 93.3 FM in Guelph, Ontario, through the web on CFRU.ca, and live streaming on CFRU's YouTube channel. Keep informed with the show on Facebook and Twitter, both at SMK Radio Program. I'm Drew JC And Nicholas Cooper. Until next we behold, prog, prog on. on and look inward and beyond.
Ladies and gentlemen, you're listening to CFRU 93.3 FM. Greetings. We present to you the SMK, the Sentinel's Marvelous Kaleidoscope. At CFRU 93.3 FM in Guelph, Ontario, through the web on CFRU.ca, and live streaming on CFRU's YouTube channel. We are your master overseers, Drew Jacy and Nicholas Cooper. We will be looking inward and beyond at progressive rock, the branches of progressive fusion and alternative genres, a reminiscence.